Hi there, and welcome to Talk ETFs, ETF.com's weekly video series. I'm Sumi Roy, Senior Analyst here at ETF.com. This week, I'm talking with Timothy Kramer, CEO of CNIC Funds. Timothy, great to have you on the show. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about this. Absolutely. So, Timothy, you have an ETF that invests in something that's unusual to most investors who are listening right now, and that is electricity futures. Can you tell us about your fund? Sure, absolutely. So, electricity is the most consumed commodity in the United States on a retail notional basis. But up until now, it hasn't been in any ETF, any mutual funds, any index, nothing. So what we did is we partnered with ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, the group that owns the New York Stock Exchange, and we created the first ever electricity index. And we published that index back in January of 23. And then we launched an ETF on the New York Stock Exchange, and the ticker is AMPD, AMPD. We launched that back in May of 23. So what this consists of is you have all sorts of other commodities that trade on exchanges. So you've got crude oil and natural gas and gold and, and uh, lean hogs, et cetera, corn, all sorts of commodities. Electricity trades just like that. There are futures on the Intercontinental Exchange that trade just like other futures for other commodities. So what we did is we took a weighted average based upon what consumption is of electricity in the U.S. for six of the different major trading hubs. And then we weight that using uh, what the EIA data is for what the actual electricity consumption is. So based upon how much uh, electricity or power is used in the U.S., that's what this index represents. And the futures are what's there for the trading vehicle that underlines what the ETF is. That's super interesting. And of course, everyone listening is probably fascinated, but ultimately they want to know what kind of returns can they get by investing in this? Do you have any idea what type of returns the strategy would have delivered long term? Because a lot of people listening, they're familiar with ETFs types of commodities, like you said, oil, natural gas, but they're not generally seen as buy and hold type of investments just because of the structure of the futures curve, contango and things like that. Is it similar when it comes to electricity futures? So the, the, fir the first answer to your question is, if we go back to January of 2018, up through the end of 23, uh, this index has averaged about 14.5% returns, and the volatility hasn't been you know, that significant. So we have a better sharp ratio than pretty much everything else out there, better risk-adjusted returns. Um, in terms of, you know, you talk about Contango, the way that we actually, and it's good to hear you say that, the way that we actually designed this is most of the commodity uh, indexes or commodity funds that are out there right now, they'll just buy the prompt contract. And when that contract expires, they'll roll that into month two. And so most of those curves are in Contango. And so there's a negative roll yield, which is what I think you're, you're pointing to on this. Well, what we've done is we, we take a 12-month strip, a rolling 12-month strip, not a prompt. And that's because electricity is not storable. And so there's a seasonality aspect to it that if we just did the prompt, you get some, some strange and some volatile results. And the roll yield is, is kind of chunky. But when we do the rolling 12-month strip, it gives you less volatility, so you get better risk-adjusted returns. And a lot of these different regions that make up this index, a lot of the different futures that we're talking about, they're actually in backwardation. So there are many instances where we're getting positive roll yield on this. That's great. That's great. Now, I want to dive into the fundamentals of the power market today, Timothy. We've seen stories about the struggles of the country's electricity grid and how climate change is causing more adverse weather events. What does that mean for electricity futures and your ETF? Sure. Great question. So when you take a look at the fundamentals right now, um, we just like to think that supply is greatly overstated and demand is greatly understated. And so you can't pick up the paper without having something, you know, talking about electricity demand. Uh, there's Buffett over the weekend, uh, he's put out on X that he thinks electricity demand is greatly understated in the U.S. Elon Musk was in the paper maybe three or four months ago talking about whatever you think electricity demand is in the U.S., multiply that by four and you're still going to be understating it. Uh, so the list goes on when you pick that up and kind of what you're seeing for like the overall demand picture. Even if you just take what the actual demand numbers are and you weather normalize that, so you take take away the fact that we've had like two of the most uh, two of the warmest winters we've had like ever, you know, back to back here, you're still seeing decent demand growth in terms of just weather normalized and in terms of the U.S. economy. So about depending upon the region, anywhere from like three to five percent. So the demand is absolutely there, and we think that that demand is still understated. So if you take a look at like AI, if you do a Google search, that takes one watt of power. If you do an AI search, it takes 100 watts of power, but it takes 1,000 watts to train that. So, you know, things like that, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining going on, 70% of the expense for Bitcoin mining is electricity. 
if you take a look at the data centers that are going up in the U.S., data centers themselves are supposed to increase their demand for electricity by 10% per year up until like the end of 2030. You've got the U.S. trying to shift towards electric vehicles, where the stated goal is by uh, 2030 again to have no new cars be combustion engines. So from a, from a demand standpoint, we think that this thing is greatly understated. From a supply standpoint, we think that this is greatly overstated. And the reason is the U.S. is trying to reach an 85 percent renewable grid by 2030 and 100% renewable by 2035. And so in order to do that, they're trying to retire the fossil generation and put up all these renewables. So the problems with that are, number one, it's really difficult to build these renewables because of the backlog. So it takes anywhere from four to seven years to get these things actually permitted and get through. And so that's going to make that, you know, the renewables the supply a, a lot slower to hit the grid. And then you've got uh, the, the Biden administration right now is trying to tweak on the uh, some of the rules where they're going to make the fossil generation retire even quicker than most people think. So there's kind of an imbalance there. And then when you add that to the fact that you wind up with these renewables, they're not dispatchable. So when you, you can't really control what the output is. So you get the wind and you get the solar when it occurs. So you can have instances as you've, as you've had in the past where you know you wake up in the morning and it's cold and there's no wind and there's no solar. So you don't really have the ability to generate that electricity. So there's a lot of supply demand imbalances that we think are are, are making this a really uh, interesting situation for investors. Certainly sounds like a very compelling long-term story there, Timothy. And you obviously have a very fascinating ETF. Ultimately, who do you think should be taking a look at this ETF? Who should be you know, buying the short-term traders, long-term investors? Who? Now, great question. So typically when people buy ETFs, they buy it for one of two reasons, right? It's either strategic, which is why do you want to buy this and hold it forever? Or it's tactical, like why do I buy this now? Because I think it's going to go up. And so when you talk about why should I buy this from a strategic standpoint, um, you know, three quick reasons that come to mind. Number one would be model portfolios. So you've got a lot of the institutions that used to say, you know, 60, 40 portfolios. So Ma, Pa, Kramer should be putting in, you know, 60 percent equities and 40 percent debt. Most of those platforms are now saying we need to rethink that. And so they're trying to uh, talk about the virtues of going 60, 35, 5. So 60 percent equities, 35 percent debt and 5 percent commodities. So if you look at that and you go back over the past five or seven years, the 60-35-5 beats the 60-40. If you do 60-35-3-2, three commodities and two electricity, it beats them all on a risk-adjusted basis and on an absolute basis. So a model portfolio, we think there's really good uh, rationale for somebody to buy it there. You also, in terms of like inflation, so electricity is 2.5% of CPI, month in and month out. That's directly. And then indirectly, it pretty much touches everything in terms of transporting food, you know, what it costs to, to produce things. And so our electricity index and the associated ETF is about 80% correlated to inflation. So it gives you inflation protection there. And then in terms of like portfolio diversification, literally this is not correlated to any equities or any debt classes. So that gives you what you're looking for. Um, that would be from the strategic standpoint. From the tactical standpoint, why should you buy this now? Like why should this go up? There's the compelling supply demand mismatch that we talked about, but then also you take a look at um, this is an ETF that's based on electricity futures. So in essence, you get paid to hold this because most of these uh, products that are based upon commodities, if you put $100 in commodity futures, you need to put up $20 in, firm, in terms of margin. And then the other 80 is there to support that. So that goes in you know, three month treasuries. And so it literally, if nothing happens here with this and prices just stay the same, you should theoretically earn the risk-free rate. So you get paid to hold this thing for it to go up. Fantastic. Well, this was a great discussion, Timothy. Thanks so much for taking the time and sharing your insights with us. I appreciate talking about it. Thanks for the opportunity.